Okay, a couple quick things before we get into translation. Uh, one thing I actually forgot to mention in the last video. Uh, again, the differences between DNA and RNA are, one, the sugars, two, the bases, but also just the shape of the molecule. And this is the simplest difference, and that is that DNA is double-stranded, like I said, but RNA is single-stranded. So you saw that in the transcription video. Uh, RNA looks like a half of a piece of DNA. So it was literally single-stranded versus uh, double-stranded DNA. So again, picking up where we left off, RNA is made during transcription. That is the copied code of DNA that can be taken out of the nucleus to the cytoplasm where the ribosomes are located and that's where translation takes place. All right? There are three types of RNA. mRNA, and you can just put, you want to write this down or know this, a little m, RNA, the m stands for messenger. Oops. The other type of RNA is rRNA, and the R stands for ribosomal, meaning the ribosome. And then the other type of RNA is called tRNA, and you can see they're all just little letters in front, little m, little r, little t. And the tRNA, T stands for transfer. And it's actually transferring, or transfers, amino acids. So three different types of RNA that are getting made during transcription. You saw the process in the last video. Here are the th three different RNAs that are getting made and most importantly being used by our cells uh, to uh, make proteins. And that's what we're going to take a look at in this next video. Uh, the process of making proteins is called translation, also known as protein synthesis, as you can see labeled here in this animation. Again, animation that's just found on uh, this website. It's just found on our classroom website. And so uh, what happens, again, is this piece of RNA, uh, we'll say this is the messenger RNA. Messenger meaning it's taking the code from DNA out to make a protein. That messenger RNA comes out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm okay and meets up with the ribosome which is going to be this kind of purple blob that comes in here and you can sit here and play this uh, at the website this animation at the website as often as you'd like I'm just going to kind of go through it step by step and pause along the way so here's the ribosome it's got two parts to it not that you really need to know those details and the ribosome is just going to kind of chug along and read this piece of ribosomal R or sorry, piece of messenger RNA, mRNA. Again, that's the message taken from DNA. Uh, this ribosome is actually made of RNA as well, but to show a bunch of letters squiggled up in here and make a big mess out of this animation. So to simplify it, it's just kind of this big purple blob, kind of looks like a nose and uh, mitten. I think people often say it kind of looks like a mitten. Uh, but anyways, here are the uh, three parts to the ribosome that were important for translation, for making a protein. And something to recognize is that there are only two tRNAs that fit into the ribosome at one time. So in this picture right here, again, something that you may want to copy and paste onto your notes. In this picture, you can see all three pieces of RNA. The messenger RNA is the pink one, down here along the bottom. The ribosomal RNA is this big purple blob. Again, just to show those letters all squiggled up in here, it'd be kind of messy. The tRNAs are these guys. Let me rewind really quick. The tRNAs are these guys that kind of look like T's. They kind of have a T shape. And on the top here are the amino acids. And these are the most important parts of this whole process because the amino acids actually make up the protein. Again, hopefully a review from last semester. So how this works is, again, the ribosome kind of forms around this piece of messenger RNA and starts to bring in tRNAs that are kind of just hanging out in the cytoplasm, similar to how, the, how these RNA nucleotides came in here. They're just kind of hanging out in the nucleus. All right, so these guys are just being brought in from, the, uh, just kind of located in the cytoplasm, just being brought in. And all of these codes here on the mRNA 
are actually being read in groups of three, and they are called codons. Okay, the codons, C-O-D-O-N, the codons are found on the messenger RNA. Okay, these are literally the codes taken from the DNA molecule. What matches up with the codon is the anticodon of tRNA, and you can see that right here. Anticodon matches up with the codon. Okay, so anticodon of tRNA matches up with codon of mRNA. And again, the rRNA is just this big purple blob, the ribosome, that is going to go along and read the mRNA, bring in tRNAs. So what you can see here are that there are two tRNAs in the picture at one time. The ribosome will then move along. It's going to connect the first amino acid in the sequence, which in this case is methionine and will always be methionine, to the second amino acid, which in this case is proline. It's going to scoot along, although it looks like the messenger RNA is moving. It's actually the ribosome that's moving. It's going to scoot along to the next codon, which in this case is UAC. It's going to get rid of the tRNA that was in here because, well, again, this tRNA is transferring amino acids. So at this point, this tRNA has done its job. It can go out and go get another methionine if it wants to. But in any case, this tRNA has been used. It is no longer useful, so the ribosome kind of spits it out. It's going to bring in the next tRNA, which again is going to match up. Base pairing rules of RNA are similar to DNA, but again, there is no T of RNA, so everywhere there would be a T, you see a U. So it's A with U instead of A with T, like you saw in DNA. G with D C and C with G still is the same. All right, so A with U, U with A, G with C. The anticodon matches up with the codon. It's going to transfer those amino acids that were already there to the next amino acid that came in, spit out the tRNA, and bring in another one. Again, anticodon to codon, transfer the amino acids, and it's going to actually make a bond here. And that bond is called a polypeptide bond. Or just, sorry, peptide bond, excuse me, called a peptide bond. The whole entire object is called a polypeptide. Let me see if I can find it in the words down here. No. So it's just the bond between the amino acids is called a peptide bond. So just take out the poly part. There you go. Peptide bond is what's formed between amino acids to actually make a protein. All right, so another amino acid comes in, connected to its transfer RNA. Poly polypeptide is getting longer. The protein is getting its score. Eventually going to be a protein. Protein is getting longer. And just keeps bringing in new tRNAs, matching up anticodon to codon, putting the amino acids together by peptide bonds, and spitting out tRNAs on the back end. What you'll notice here is called the stop codon. There are a few of these codons, known as stop codons, which tells the ribosome literally to stop adding, do not add anything here, break apart, and now this sequence of amino acids that just got made, hopefully correctly, is going to go off and take a really weird folded up squiggly shape, similar to dropping a like wet spaghetti noodle on the floor and just letting it dry. Okay, it takes this like really weird squiggled up shape. That shape is whatever protein uh, that protein is supposed to be. Okay, so let's say this is the protein uh, that is uh, located in your muscles that you know allow your muscles to contract, or this is the uh, protein that's in your skin to make skin pigment. And people that don't have this pigment are albino or uh, any creature. Uh, sometimes you see snakes, rats, mice that are albino. They don't make pigment. Uh, or this is a protein that is in charge of transporting across the cell membrane. Okay, and if that uh, protein does not get made correctly, then some substances are not transported correctly across the cell membrane, which obviously could be a huge deal when it comes to the uh, homeostasis of some certain cell, whatever the cell that is. Okay, So all these amino acids that got ch kind of put together, a big long chain, are make going to eventually fold into a protein. And to kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about, let me just quickly go to Wikipedia and you can see what I mean by 
Uh, literally, a protein's shape is just kind of a really squiggled up mess. Okay, so here it gives you an idea of uh, some protein. I don't even know what this is, doesn't matter. A oh, heme group, so. Oh, that's just the green part. But, anyways, you can see this is just a bunch of amino acids that are all twisted up. Okay, big long chain of amino acids that are all twisted up. They form, take their shape, and then that protein is whatever it is and does whatever it's supposed to do. The problem here, when we start talking about mutations uh, in the next section, is that if the wrong amino acid gets brought in, then this amino acid sequence is not right. If the amino acid sequence isn't right, then the protein doesn't get made correctly. If the protein doesn't get made correctly, it does not do its job correctly or does not function at all, which, again, could be big problems for the cell when you talk about things like the cell cycle. The cell cycle is regulated by proteins that say, okay, check, DNA was copied, safe to go into mitosis. Mitosis begins, okay, DNA is lined up correctly, the chromosomes are lined up correctly, safe to divide them. If those proteins aren't working correctly during the cell cycle, that's where cancerous cells form. So when you talk about proteins not getting made correctly because perhaps the uh, codon was incorrect or the wrong tRNA was brought in, okay, if the wrong amino acid gets placed here, it's supposed to be maybe another proline, and instead it brings in ASP, which I believe is maybe aspartic acid. If the wrong amino acid gets brought in here, then the protein is not made correctly, or possibly not made correctly. And that's when you get to mutations, which we'll cover in the next video. So this just quickly goes through, maybe more uh, realistic speed, the ribosome forming, bringing in tRNAs, spitting out tRNAs after they've transferred their amino acid, and then getting to a stop codon, which exactly that is just stops. It stops adding tRNAs, stops linking together amino acids. That protein is as big as it's going to be. And realistically, there are probably thousands or tens of thousands of these amino acids, but for the sake of simplicity for this animation, you see only about a dozen or so. And then that protein, or sorry, amino acid chain will go off, fold into a very specific shape, and become a protein that is supposed to do whatever that protein's job is.